Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Lord willing, we'll have us a little Bible study moment. Uh, one of the things that you should gain here is a better understanding of your Bibles. You should uh, look upon the words as they are read to you, as they are taught, so that you can better handle that thing. Is that uh, Lynn straight now? You should uh, better do that. You want to make sure that that visibility is right for the family's question via Ustream. Uh, check that out right quick to make sure that that's right. <clears throat> so again, Matthew chapter 24. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the rapture this morning. And... Um, you know, last week we were in the vows of judgment which are to be poured out upon the kingdom of the beast. And the Lord, even though you could have gotten some understanding about the vows, God was speaking prophetically about something that he was doing now. And from what I've been able to see in the news, we of course we talked about how the Lord would begin to strike at the resources how he would begin to pay people back for sins that they had committed in times past. Uh, we talk about the saints that were in heaven pleading to God for mercy, I mean for, for judgment, and we also mentioned mercy, uh, because there have been many babies that have been aborted at the hands of their parents, millions. And so we talked about all of this blood that this country has over it, along with what other nations have over it. And that how God will begin to deal with some of those things. And so you could have gotten an understanding of the, of the vials, uh, some understanding about the vials, uh, but God was speaking prophetically. But this particular word is really just designed to teach us what our Bible says about the rapture. Okay? It's designed to teach us about what the Bible says about the rapture. Now, this lesson is very, very important. Because there are schools of thought on when this will occur. There are schools of thought around when this will occur. Um, and I had to turn to Matthew 24. And I want to um, um, read it to you in Matthew chapter 24. And the Bible says it like this. And I'll get back to the schools of thought in a second. I didn't lose that. Um, well, let me just go ahead and say what they are while I'm there. There are three schools of thought. Um, first of all, let me tell you what the rapture is. And um, I'm all over the place, but basically, it's a future event where Christians are suddenly removed off the earth. They are actually caught up in the air, and uh, we have this event. Uh, coming to the world. When Jesus returns, the Bible speaks of the dead being raised, the dead being raised, and they're going to meet him in the air. And it's not all the dead. It's only the dead that suffered under the hands of the beast. And, and those who are alive and remain will meet the Lord in the air. Now, let me tell you why this particular message is important. It is important because it tells us what is coming to the world. And by reason of knowing what is coming to the world in the future, we know why things are even happening as they are now. For example, there is an antichrist that's going to come to the world. God is going to send his spirit that's going to open the bottomless pit and this angel is going to possess a man who is the beast and this man is going to wreak havoc on this earth. He's going to be responsible for killing one third of men. The Bible says he's going to make war against the saints. Now, and when? And overcome them. It's already written. And we also see even now that the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. 
It is a spirit that denies that Jesus is the Christ. And in many antichrist type nations, if you go professing yourself to be Christians, you will be jailed or killed. That is going on in the world right now. Now again, that's not too real to us because we've been insulated from it being in America. But if you had an opportunity to go to other places throughout the world, you will know the animosity that is in this world to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we are very privileged. But let me also tell you this. Just because we are privileged now, we will not always be privileged. Because Matthew's gospel says that you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now when Jesus say all nations, when he prophetically say all nations, he is saying that this country will become like theirs. Now I want to see how easy it's going to be to stand for the Lord in those conditions. It's going to be extremely difficult. For me and everybody else in here. Now I know there is no other option but Jesus. You just take the bullet and die. There is no other option. That's the truth. Jesus said, don't fear the one who can kill the body, but fear the one after he has killed the body, he can cast the soul into hell. That's the one we're supposed to be scared of. After the one that kills the body, after he killed you, there's nothing else he can do to you. But fear the one that after he has killed the body, he can cast his soul into hell. So if we will be hated by all nations for his namesake, then that tells me that this country biblically will decline in its morals. It will decline in its morals. Now that don't mean we have to go follow the tide. We're believers. And God is going to always have a remnant of people in the earth. And you should proudly stand to be one of those people. Amen. But we, just kind of like what Sister Daniel was talking about yesterday, have to be willing to be lights in the midst of great darkness. Amen. We cannot be willing to follow the crowd and go everywhere that the crowd say we should go. And do everything that the crowd say we should do. We know clearly that when they're saying something that's contrary to God's word. And we have to be willing to be lights. So let me go ahead and get into this word. In Matthew 24 and 38, the Bible says this, and we'll go a little bit more into that. Matthew 24, verse 38 says this. For as in the days of Noah... Before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came that took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now what Jesus is saying is, is that the world is not going to have a clue as to what is about to happen. They're going to be clueless. They're not going to have any idea what's going to happen in the day and in the hour that this thing manifests. They're not going to have a clue. Now, even though Christians do not know the hour, we know the season. Yes. When I see the beast manifest and he has entered into Jerusalem and he has uh, caused the city to be desolate, I know that his reign will be 42 months. Biblically. I know it will be three and a half years. I can almost count from the time that the abomination that makes desolate enter into the temple. The Bible says that for 42 months he's going to reign. I can count that. I know the season. So I can almost predict when Jesus is going to come back. It's going to be somewhere around this time. Now, I can't tell you if it's going to be 1 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't tell you if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but I can tell you it's going to be around this time. Yes. 
But the world is not going to have a clue. And look at what the Bible goes on to say. In verse 40. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now pay attention to this. That Jesus came when this happened. Now that is important. Remember. Jesus came when this happened. What happened? Then two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not the hour, you know the season, but you don't know the hour, when your Lord come. So when Jesus gets ready to return, and we talked about the dead being raised first. And then those alive meeting him in the air. There's going to be a sudden thing that's going to happen where two people are going to be working together and one is going to be taken off up into the air. And the other one's going to be left. What happened to him? What happened to him? The Bible says that when it's when the Son of Man comes. Now, there are doctrines out there that say when this is going to happen. And the reason why that many of these doctrines are dangerous is because in those days, people will be losing faith left and right. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the conditions that are going to be in the world in those days. Remember, this country will decline morally, but you don't have to be in that group. But I want to talk a little bit about some of the conditions that are going to be in even in this country. That's going to, things that are going to begin to manifest that will cause people to lose faith. And again, if you believe a wrong teaching about this, if you believe, for example, there's one that says there's a pre-tribulation rapture where I won't see any of these things happen. If you believe that and they start happening, you, can, you might start thinking that well, the word of God was a lie anyway. And you'll be one of those ones who fall away from the faith. Why? Because you were taught wrong about it. Not because the word of God was a lie. But somebody who didn't know and understand the word of God taught you wrong about it. Now if I come up here and tell you, baby, you're going to be here to see the, uh, the moon turn into blood. You're going to be here and you're going to see great hail storms. You're going to be here and this man is going to rise up and he's going to enter into the temple of Jerusalem. And he's going to proclaim himself God and he's going to kill one third of men. I want you to think about one third of men. The, the, the situation with that. Let me tell you something. If we have six billion people on earth, one third of them is two billion. He will successfully kill two billion. And all of this is going to happen in a single generation. Let me give you an idea of what 2 billion people is. If America has 300 million people, that is destroying and killing every single soul in this country from Washington, D.C. to Louisiana six times. East Coast to West Coast, now one soul left alive. That's how bad that is. That's how bad it's going to be. And the one that's going to be ruling the world, the Bible says, at one of his methods, when he's out there making war against the saints, is that he is going to behead the Christians. I want you to think about this. There is coming one who will rule the world who is going to systematically make war against everyone that says that they are Christians and when he catch them, he will cut their heads off and he will prevail in this. 
want you to realize something. And he's going, to he's going to institute a system where you have to get a, a mark to buy and to sell. Which means you have to swear allegiance to his kingdom just to go to the gas station. Or to work a business. That's your livelihood. Connected whether or not you're going to be willing to deny the Lord. Why the Bible says that people fall away. Let me just read the scripture. And I saw thrones and then that sat on them and judgment was given to them. This is of course when Jesus returns but he also reveals how they die. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God that worship not the beast. That's the one who's going to be doing it. Neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads. Don't give me your mark. I'm not going to worship your image nor in their hands. He's going to try to put a mark on your foreheads. He's going to try to put a mark on your hand. And you're going to need that to buy and to sell. This one, let me show you again. I always like to give you verses. Turn to Revelation chapter 9. And again, I'm talking about if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, which means I will be gone with Jesus and won't see any of this. Tell that to the Christians who lost their heads. Huh. That I just read to you about. You hear what I'm saying? Tell that to them, the ones who just lost their heads. I was supposed to fly away. Yeah, you will at the right time. Yes. Revelation chapter 9, I was talking about the one third of men killed. Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 says, And the sixth angel sounded, this is a trumpet. This is a trumpet. Now you're going to find in the book of Revelation, seals, trumpets, and vows. Seals, trumpets, and vows are cataclysmic events that God will loose onto the world to judge the world for its wickedness. And the seals are first. When the seventh seal is broken, then that is the beginning of the trumpets. And the beast comes on the scene at the blowing of the fifth trump, which is found in Revelation chapter 9. Now, I'm, a talk, I'm talking about now the Great Tribulation, but know that the beast is on the scene at the fifth trump, and he starts the Great Tribulation at the blowing of the sixth trump, which means the beast comes on the scene first, and he initiates the Great Tribulation, where they kill one-third of the men. The vials, let me just give you this information, are poured out upon the kingdom of the beast, so they begin to manifest between the fifth and sixth trump. And I actually have a verse that actually shows a vial that will manifest even after the sixth trump. Now, all of the seven vials that we talked about last week in Revelation 16 have to manifest before the seventh trump which is the return of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus returns, that is when one was in the field, one was taken. That's what we read in Matthew. When the Son of Man come, one is in the field, one is taken. One is grinding in the thing, and one is, is taken, the other one is left. So let me give you my verse to uh, confirm to you these things. I look at it, it says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard the voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel with the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now obviously there is a portal 
in the river Euphrates that has uh, demons are able to come out of them. And these demons are loosed. They are bound now. They are loosed when the sixth trumpet is blown. And look at what he goes on to say. And the four angels were loosed. Now they have a purpose. And they know what their purpose is. They were loosed. Which were prepared for an hour. For a day. For a month. There's an exact hour they're going to be loosed. There's an exact day that they're going to be loosed. There's an exact month that they are going to be loosed. Look. And a year. And God knows this. God knows the month, the day, the year, and hour to slay a third part of men. Again, if, if you want to put that in context of the six billion people in the world, that is the entire population of the U.S. from Washington to Louisiana, north to south, east to west, every single soul, six times over. You still got room left to heal some more. I'm going to say something that Jesus said about this time in a second. Look at what he says. And the number of the army. Now these angels will work through an army of men. The number of the, ar the, number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. That is 200 million. You think that's a pretty big army? That's a pretty big army. 200 million. Four angels is going to use 200 million armed soldiers to kill one third of men on the earth. And they will successfully kill one third. Look, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Now think of horses. Horses is what? Transportation. John saw horses, but this is a revelation of transportation. I saw the horses in the vision, and they that sat on them, and they had breastplates of fire, ginseng, and brimstone. This was their, their war uh, colors, the thing that was on their breastplate. And the heads of the horses were the heads of lions. This is symbolism. What do lions do with their mouths? Devour, destroy. It looks like a horse because it's a form of transportation. It has the head of a lion because it's saying that the purpose of this head, you're going to see the mouth spoken of, is used to devour. Lions are destructive, strong beings. These vehicles will be strong. Their mouths are like lions. Their faces are like lions. Watch this, it keeps going. The heads of lions and out of their mouths. What will this transportation devour with that have heads of lions? With his mouth. And what does the mouth, what's going to come out of his mouth? Fire, smoke, and brimstone. Mm. Now, the closest thing that I can give you to that is obviously some kind of nuclear type devices where everything is wiped out by fire, smoke, and brimstone. You hear what I'm saying? They will be successful in this. This is coming to the world. I mean, think about it. We were once, if you were in the days of King David, what did they have? They had, they had arrows, they had horses, they had rocks, killed Goliath with a sling. And all of a sudden, the world comes into this place where knowledge increases. Daniel actually talked about it. Men will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. Now we got Machines that can fly across the world. Internet, supercomputers, weapons of mass destruction. 
What is all of this preparing for? What's coming? All of these things will come in, are coming into being because this prophecy has to be fulfilled. There has to be transportation that spews out of his mouth. That's like a lion designed to destroy and to devour. But what is the thing that comes out of his mouth? Fire, smoke, and brimstone. We have to come into this age. That's the great tribulation. Back to Matthew 24. Back to Matthew 24. I hope you're having a good time. I'm just telling you what your Bible is saying that's going to come to this world. Yes. But this Bible, the Word of God is saying it's going to come to this world. Now we know that this Bible is true because it has a good track record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is already proven that when the Bible says something in a certain time, it manifests. Mm -hmm. And those same witnesses, some of those same people that God used says these things would happen. Mm -hmm. And that they're for a set date, a set time, a set year, and a set month. Back to Matthew 24. Now we talked about the two women, the two in the field, one taken, another left. When you scroll up, it talked about how that was connected to the, the coming of the Son of Man. Now if you scroll up a little bit more, let's see. Verse 29. Watch this. Immediately after the tribulation. Are you looking at it in verse 29? Mm -hmm. You see how Jesus used the immediately after the tribulation of those days? The sun shall be darkened. Mm -hmm. The moon shall not give a light. The stars will fall from heaven. Watch this. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Now, again, what happens when the Son of Man comes? One in the field, one is taken, right? One, one is doing this, the other one left, right? That happens after the tribulation. After the tribulation. So if I say I'm going to be gone before then, the Bible didn't say that. The Bible said the two in the field, one left, one taken, and all that stuff is going to happen after the tribulation of those days. Then I'll see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man, and then two will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left, etc., etc. Hmm. Look at what he does when he comes after the tribulation of those days in verse 29. Verse 31 says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather what? They shall gather what? The elect. That's you and me. That is the one in the field, one taken, one left. After the tribulation of those days, he shall send the angels, and they shall gather the elect from the four winds, north, east, south, and west, from one end of heaven to the other. After the tribulation of now, when you go up a little bit further, the verse 22, he even talks about the, the tribulation in those days. Let's read it in verse 21. If you look at verse 15, that's the Antichrist going into the temple, the abomination that makes desolate. He causes desolation to come into the city of Jerusalem. When he invades it, he will reign three and a half years, according to the book of Revelation. And then when you go down into verse 21, after he has entered into that temple, this is the breaking of the sixth, the blowing of the sixth trump. Verse 21 coincides with the blowing of the sixth trump, which we just read in Revelation 9, where they kill one third of men. Jesus is actually talking about that in verse 21 when he says, look, look at verse 21. For then there shall be what? Great tribulation. And we just read a few verses later where he said, after the tribulation. Let's finish reading. Then there shall be great tribulation. When that great, great tribulation came, when the beast came on the scene, verse 15, such as was not since the beginning of the world. This is going to be so bad, you ain't never seen it in the world. Ever. To this time, nor ever shall be. This is the worst ever. Wow. 
Look, except those days be sharp, there should be no flesh saved. You know what that's saying? God had to stop him or he would have destroyed everybody. Look, but for the elect's sake, those days are short. Hold up, I thought no Christians were on the earth. If you believe in pre-tribulation rapture, oh, for God don't catch me waiting for any of this stuff happen. Huh. Well, the Bible says Christians are going to be beheaded. The Bible says he's going to make war against the saints and prevail against them. The Bible says that the tribulation is actually shortened for the elect's sake. Because they are here. The few that survive him, yeah. if you can hide them, in the wilderness and not be caught. If you learn how to grow plants and find water in the river because you can't go in the stove, wow. they're going to catch you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell you how bad this world is going to be even way before the beast comes. Where Jesus is talking about it, you'll be headed by all nations for his name's sake. Let's, let's see. I'm going to tell you something. Things will get progressively worse. And we are already on the course of that. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Look at what he says in Matthew 24. I'm going to read it in Luke's gospel because they say it. They say the same thing. But Luke adds a few more details. That's why you got to read. read check out a few different versions of the same account because some add details that the other may not add. Watch this. I want to show you something. I talked about people falling away. I talked about people falling away. And there's a scripture actually in uh, the book of Thessalonians that talks about that falling away, that people are going to fall away from the faith. But I want to show you the conditions even before the Antichrist, even in the time of Mystery Babylon, which is before the Antichrist, what is it going to be like in the world? And we know that America won't always be in power because Mr. Babylon has to arise. We know America will not always be in power because the beast has to arise, and they will rule the world. Now watch this. So I'm going to tell you something. We, this nation got a time limit on it. We have a time limit of our power. We have a time limit of our influence, influence in the world. And it's going to diminish. It is going to go down. This Bible must come to pass. This word must come to pass. And it will. I want you to, I'm, I, you know, this is what I'm trying to do with this word. I want you to see what the world is like in these times. And then I want you to imagine and ask yourself, what, can I survive this? Would I stand for the Lord in this? I want to show you what the world is going to be like. The whole world, even this country. I'm about to show you what the world is going to be like, even this country. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 12 of Luke 21. And this correlates, watch this, this correlates with what Jesus is teaching in Matthew 24. Real quick, you'll look back at both of them and go back and forth with it. This is Luke's version of Matthew 24. Watch this. Watch this. Now, he talks about the wars, the rumors of wars. He says, don't be terrified, for these things must come to pass. This is Luke 20, 20, 21 in verse 9. Now, watch this. He goes on talking about nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Watch this. He talks about the earthquakes and diverse places and famines. Now let me tell you what these things correlate. Luke 9, Luke, excuse me, Luke 21, 9 through 11 is the, is the first four seals being broken in Revelation 6. If you want to see Jesus' teaching on the seals, read Revelations, he taught it again through John, of course, in Revelations. But he also taught it while he was on earth. And he taught that where Luke is recording verse, Luke 21, verse 9 through uh, 11, where he talks about nation shall rise against nation. Remember the breaking of the seals. 
uh, he broke the first seal, and a white horseman came. And what, what, what did the white, the white horseman cause? He went forth conquering to conquer. In other words, God was going to loose the spirit. Jesus is going to break a seal in heaven and make nations want to conquer each other. He's going to loose an evil angel that's going to make nations want to conquer each other. You say, why is Jesus doing this? Jesus is going to do this because mystery Babylon by that time would have polluted the world. I mean, you think about it. Seals, vials, trumpets. All of them come from heaven. And they're going to do some terrible things from this, in, to this world. Why? Because we see things like what the beast is doing. And I'm about to show you some other reasons why he's going to break the seals. This is the reason why he's going to break the seals. Watch this. Now, I just told you that Luke... 21, 9 through 11 is the seals, the first four seals. If you read the first four seals, you will find nations rising as nations because the second seal broken is peace taken from the earth. I saw a red horseman, and his purpose was to take peace from the earth so that they would kill one another with the sword. What is that? This is That is when Jesus is saying in Luke 21, verse 10, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Peace will literally be taken from this world. Look at what he says, though. He talks about the earthquakes, the famines, the pestilences, the fearful sights. Then he goes on to say, look, but before all these things, okay, before you start loosening the four seals, and we know Mr. Babylon is before that. In fact, Mr. Babylon is destroyed by the breaking of the seals. Here it is. Watch this. And I, I can show you the verses on that, but I'm trying to get you through this. But I'm trying to show you why he's going to do all this to the world. Now, this is what the world is going to look like. Look at what the world's going to look like. Verse 12 of Luke 21. But before all these things, they shall lay hands on you and shall persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue. There will be places dedicated for worship. But they're not going to worship Christian. They're not worshiping the God of Christians. That means even in the time when they are persecuting and killing Christians, that there will be places of worship, but it's not going to be the worship of our God. It's not going to be the worship of the God that glorifies Jesus. They're going to deliver you up in these synagogues. You did not dare mention Christ in this place. You see how deceived the world's going to be? Places of worship, but not for Christ. Okay? They're going to deliver you up to synagogues and into prisons. Who's ready to go to jail? Because you confess on Christ. Because you're having Bible studies in your house. And they raid your house for that. They got parts of the world that's doing that now. I'm just telling you, it's not going to always be done over here. We're not going to always have the freedoms that we have now over here. That which we see over there will be here. Look. They're going to deliver you up into synagogues and into prisons. Being brought before kings and rulers. See, when he said, now look, when he says synagogues, that means religious places are not going to receive Christianity. When he says kings and rulers, he's saying governments. It's going to systematically persecute you. And me? And they're going to put you in prison for it? Watch this. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. God said, I'm going to let them catch you so you can bear witness to them. Now, I want you to think about this. The Lord lets you get caught. Because I want you to bear witness to me in front of this king. That was Paul's mission. It can't be yours. Why Paul was going to jail all the time? Because God wanted to preach to some judges. God wanted some kings to hear the gospel. King Griffith said, you almost convinced me to be a Christian, Paul. God is going to use people to allow them to get caught because I want this gospel to be preached in a systematically corrupt government. 
It shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you should answer. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or to contradict or to resist. And you shall be betrayed by both parents, brothers, kinfolks, and friends. Look, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. I can't trust the synagogue. I can't trust the government. Can't trust my husband. Can't trust my daughter. Can't trust my friend. Because the whole society is against the gospel. And they are putting people in jail because of it. They're putting people in prison because of it. They are killing people because of it. And I'm going to tell you something. Your brother will turn against you when, I'm situ when, that, when, that, when that climate. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your own daughter will turn you in before they die being associated with you and your love for God. Now, now do you see why Jesus breaks his seal and says, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom? Because I'm going to look at places dedicated for worship as persecuting and killing my people. I'm going to look at governments all over the world because he said, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Loose version of it said, you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. Nations, men, everybody. Yeah. I, see de I see dedicated places of worship working against my people. I see governments working against my people. I see even my people being betrayed by their own family. Ooh, and some of them, they cause to be put to death. You know what I'm saying? So now do you understand why when you read in Revelation chapter 6 and the fifth seal is broken, they're saying, God, when are you going to avenge us? Those people are coming out of this. They're coming out of this. They're coming out of Mystery Babylon where everything is corrupt. Everything is evil. Everything is against the gospel. children have to stand in schools with gay lovers with people teasing people mocking people cursing people out disrespecting teachers can you stand can I just stand how about go a step further can I preach the gospel can I be stealthy about preaching the gospel see that's what we need some of you to do you want to talk about some children's ministry Share the gospel with somebody. Yes. Lead them in a prayer of salvation. Lay hands on them. Talk to them about Jesus. Do it in a subtle way if you've got to do it. Do it. Jesus said, be wise as serpents and harmless as dove. you got to be very subtle about it. Because you are a sheep in the midst of wolves. And you will see them wolves manifest.
Now, I want to encourage you to go to a local church where your parents let you come to my church. Give me your phone number and I'll call you. I'll follow with you on Saturday night the day before and see if you want to come. If they won't take you, I'll come get you. Or I'll ask my parents to come pick you up. And you get people into the kingdom of God. That's children's ministry. That's the work of salvation. And because they're so young in the faith and immature, you have to remind them every week that it's time to go to church. Because just like a baby don't know how to pick a Bible, a bottle up and feed themselves, you have to be responsible for making sure that they receive the nourishment in the Word of God. And you have to do that for them for a season. I don't care if they're 16 years old. I don't care if they're 18 years old. If they got saved last week, they babies. You got to do everything for them. You come to church? Yeah, I'm coming to church. What you gonna wear? Oh, I'm gonna wear this little thing up here. You don't want to wear that to church. Let me encourage you. Put on some, they go to your knees or live it under your knees. And that's not too form fitting. Because you got to keep shape and some brothers and sisters might look at you and stumble. You hear what I'm saying? See, now you're discipling somebody. And you're being a steward over a soul trying to keep them in the kingdom of God. Because let me tell you something. Pharaoh will come after you even after you come out of Egypt. And he's going to try to bring you back. So you have to watch out for that. You're warring against a spirit that wants to re-enslave them after you brought them to a place of deliverance. So let me tell you one last time. There is no pre-tribulation rapture. There is no mid-tribulation rapture. The rapture occurs when Jesus comes, and Jesus comes at the blowing of the seventh trump, which is the very last thing that's going to happen. Because when you read in the book of Revelations, when the seventh trump is blown, the kingdoms of the world become the kingdoms of the Lord. God and his Christ. That's when one is in the field, one is taken. But you're going to be in the scene, the moon turned into blood. You're going to, be, you're going to see a big hailstorm that covers the earth, burns up all the grass. You're going to see a volcano come that's going to go into the sea and kill animals. All kinds of things. Christians are going to be on earth seeing it. And you will be here to see the great tribulation. Because Jesus said, and I ain't going to argue with Jesus. Everybody that says there's a pre-tribulation rapture are arguing with Christ himself. Who said, I have shortened those days for the Christian's sake or the elect's sake. Right? Which means they're on earth. Again, if you say believers won't be here, tell that to the ones who get their heads cut off. Or tell that to the ones who are going to experience all this stuff that I just talked about. Jailed and beheaded and betrayed by family members. Because of the gospel. I have plenty more scriptures I can show you, but I'm going to stop. I know we know that. But I can show you some scriptures of some death that's going to come to some believers on earth. And you will see why God is going to bring all this stuff to the world. Again, the truth is, is that Jesus returns the seventh trump. I'll give you these last two verses and then I'm done. I will not teach them. I'm just going to show you them just the knowledge. I'm just arming you. I'm just arming you. The seventh trump is found in Revelations 11 and 15. It's the very last thing that happens. Okay. It says the seventh trump sounded and there were great voices in heaven and the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. That is the last thing that happens as it relates to the coming of Jesus. 
when he comes, that's when the nations can be, get ready to become his, that's when one in the field, one taken, one done. Lastly, Paul also confirmed this, and this will be the last verse I give you. When, when is the rapture going to happen? Paul taught it in 1 Corinthians 15. When is the rapture going to happen? Is it before? Are we going to escape everything? No. Is it in the middle? Are we going to just go out in the middle? No. You're going to be into Jesus' return. Paul said it like this. Behold, I show you a mystery. You didn't know that Paul was teaching in time prophecy in the rapture when he said this. He was. Watch this. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Okay, when am I going to be changed? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That's the seventh trump. That's when Jesus comes. The kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ. When am I going to be changed into this glorious image? When are the dead going to get raised first? Look at it. It was connected with the resurrection. Yeah, watch this. He says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for a trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. There's a resurrection, and in those that are alive that are changed. But this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. Paul just taught on, on when the rapture is going to occur right there. 1 Corinthians 15, 7 Trump. 1 Corinthians 15, and the last Trump. Hmm. The trump is last. It is the dead last things. The vials are poured out between the fifth trump and the sixth trump, between the great tribulation and the coming of the beast. Revelation 16 happens between the fifth trump and the sixth trump. When all of that stuff is finished, then the last trump is blown and Jesus comes. And then one is in the field, one is taken. Good. I, you know, I just hope I did it in such a way where it was clear. Um, this is actually one of my mandates from heaven, and that's to prepare the Lord's people for the evil days to come. That's when He gave me that book, Revelations of Jesus Christ Predetermined. He spoke to me and said, I want you to prepare my people for the evil days.